What is up everyone, it's Umbrogaryu, back with our second part of the animation tutorial. Now, I strongly recommend you guys to watch these tutorials in order, because um, some inform information that we talk talking about in uh, each preceding tutorial is going to rely on information I taught in the previous tutorials. So uh, I strongly recommend that you go take a look at part 1. And um, yeah, let's get started with this part 2. So um, I tried making this part 2 include both the track view, uh, talking about the track view, the curve editor, as well as the dope sheet. But um, I tried that, it didn't work so well, it took, a, it took a bit too long. I'm trying to make each of these tutorials here less than 10 minutes because I know that none of you guys are going to watch something that's over like 15 minutes. Um, I know that I won't. So um, I'm going to try to keep these tutorials uh, short and simple. So in this one, we're only going to be talking about the track view, uh, some of the uh, key options that 3x Max offers you, namely old key and set key. And um, we're just talking about how the keys work on this track view. Now, um, let's go ahead and get started. So, what exactly is the track view? Uh, if you've ever, ever done um, any type of movie editing, uh, stuff like that, you will know that a timeline pretty much gives you a visualization of what's going on um, within the film. Likewise, with a track bar, which is this thing here, it gives you a visual, a visual a timeline of uh, how you all of your keys, all your keyframes are placed for your animations. So um, I'm going to explain that. Uh, you can see that in action later on in the tutorial. But um, here I'm going to explain some of the uh, basic navigation, how to uh, set the start time, the end time, how to uh, change the 30 frames per second, all that stuff. So let's go ahead and go into the time configuration tool here in the bottom right corner. Now it's going to open a pop-up window, which will give you uh, a bunch of options which you can set for the animation in the scene. You have the frame rate, which uh, defaults to 30 frames per, se 30 frames per second. Um, I hardly ever change this. I never change this because I am used to animating in 30 frames per second. Um, I'm used to the timing. So uh, unless you want to change it for some specific reason, uh, you could do that, but I recommend that you don't. And then, of course, you have the playback settings. Um, you have the speed of the animation that's going to play when you press the play button here. You have the start time of the animation. Let's set that to 10. Let's set that to 50 or something. Oh, that's the wrong thing. That's the length, not the set end time. Let's set that to 50. That's pretty much, pretty much set up uh, where the uh, start of your animation starts and the end of your animation ends. And uh, as you can see, the length here is automatically 40 frames. And the frame count is 41. So um, yeah, this is pretty much self-intuitive. It's pretty intuitive. You can uh, play around with this if you want. That pretty much gives you the setting of how you uh, view the frames. I just stick with frames. So um, you can also change start and end times of the track bar by holding down Control Alt and left clicking to set the start time, and right clicking to start the uh, end time. So that's really useful if you're animating um, a long animation and you want to say zoom into this section here. Well, that's easy. We can just hold down Control Alt and drag the left click uh, button and um, set it to frame 55 or something. So let's go back to what we had before. That's pretty much sort of the basic navigation of the track bar. So um, how does it exactly work? Well, let's show that um, with uh, an object we will animate here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's see. Um, create a box. I'll actually, turn off Seki here. I want to show you guys how what happens if you have nothing selected. So let's move that to the center of the scene by right-clicking these coordinate boxes. And that sets automatic sets to zero. So let's say I want this object to move to this area here and rotate a bit at frame 10. So I'm going to go ahead and move to frame 10. I'm going to drag the object to where I want it and uh, rotate however I want it. And as well, a useful thing you can do here, you can see my gizmo for the rotation tool here and the move tool here is a tad too big. I can change the size of that by clicking the, um, by pressing the minus button or the plus button on the keyboard. And that just sets the size for gizmo. It's very useful sometimes. So um, we have that animated to this point here. But as you can see, once I drag this uh, time here and play it, nothing's happening. And the reason is uh, 3ds Max thinks that you're editing the object instead of animating it since you have you know, had none of the key mode selected. So let's go back to what we had before by pressing Ctrl Z and I'm going to enable Auto Key. And let's do that exact same thing 
moving here, rotating it. And 3ds Max automatically creates two keyframes for me. And if I was to move in between them, it shows me that 3ds Max has uh, created animation between these two keyframes by uh, setting values in between here, tweening them so that it will animate between these two set keyframes. I can also do that by press, placing a, a movement key here, go to frame 30 and rotate the object a bit. Maybe let's go to 40, uh, scale the object to gigantic, and let's go here. Let's change the size of this. Let's go to 10. I should, go, I should make it bigger, 50, 50, and 50. All right. So if you notice here, you see that 3ds Max has created a bunch of colored keyframes. And um, as you probably think right now, yes, they do represent uh, position, rotation, scale, and object properties. And um, that's mainly because uh, on this keyframe, I can play it through for you guys. So these two, uh, from 0 to 10, it's you can see that both rotation and movement is happening. And also you can see a bit of scale going on too, because I have no scale keyframe placed here. So what 3ds Max thinks is I'm scaling the object all the way from frame 0 to frame 40. Now if I was to place a scale frame here, let's say scale it down. It will combine all three frames here, stack them together to show you that it has both it has all, all of a scale frame, a rotation frame, as well as a movement frame. So yeah, that's that. And if I was to continue, you can see that this object rotates and moves up to frame 20. It stops moving, but continues to rotate from frame 20 and on. It stops rotating at frame 30 and starts to get bigger by scaling. And at 40, it starts stops scaling. But remember, I set a size frame for the object properties. So you can see these numbers here. If I keep going, you'll keep increasing these numbers. Right? Likewise, if we go from frame 0, we'll continue to animate these numbers because I have no frame for this set in between here. So that's pretty much the key properties. And um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, how you animate simple objects in 3ds Max. That's pretty much how you, what you need to know for the track bar. And um, in the next couple of tutorials, I hopefully I can stick both the curve editor and the dope sheet into one single tutorial. But for this one, um, I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to keep it simple. It's only about the track bar. So um, I hope you guys learned something from this. Uh, if you have any questions, post in the comments or send me a PM. And um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day.